In this video, I'll do a full review of Nemang and 32 smartwatch. We will go through the hardware first, then the software and the app. And after that, we will do a series of tests on heart rate up, blood pressure up, step counter, and more. Hey there, I'm Eddie, and welcome to my channel. Today is 27th July 2022, and the price of the smartwatch is 60 US dollars. This is how the box looks like, and in the box beside the watch, you will find a charging cable, an extra band, Bluetooth manual, and the smartwatch manual. The watch has 1.32 inch screen. On the right side, we have a button. Here we have two things that look like buttons, but they are not just uh, decoration. On the other side, we have the charging pins here. Then we have the sensors here. And on the other side, we have the speaker. The straps are made out of silicon and its width is 22 millimeters. They can be easily exchanged thanks to the quick release mechanism. This is how the watch looks like. And um, I have to say to me, it looks like a watered down version of uh, some Casio G-Shock uh, watches I saw, or maybe even Sunto. Definitely looks a little bit like a military watch. I have to say, I really like the way it looks. It looks really manly. So the watch is not unisex, it's definitely made just for men. Now let's talk a little bit about the software. To see the watch face, you can turn the wrist or you can also press the button. If you turn the wrist or press the button, the watch face will stay visible for 5 seconds by default. This can be increased up to 9 seconds. While the watch is on standby, pressing the button will show you the watch face. And if you press again, it will take you to the app menu. While on the watch face, if you turn the button, you actually can change the watch face easily. Now the button itself has a little bit click when you turn it, so it feels really right. But um, yeah, depending on which side you turn, the watch will change the watch faces. And it goes through, I think, five default watch faces here, but you can download more from the app. While on the watch face, if you swipe down, you will go to the quick access menu where you have a don't disturb option, which is going to silence your vibrations and notifications. Then we have a quick access to the brightness menu where we can increase the brightness. This is level one out of five. So this is definitely one of the brightest smartwatches I ever reviewed. You can see this is the level five. And if I go to level one, it's quite enough for me. Then we have quick access to the settings. The next is find my phone feature. So if you lose your phone, you can tap here and the smartwatch is going to use the Bluetooth connection to find your phone and make it ring. And the last app here transfers the sound from the smartphone to the smartwatch. So let's test this out. I'm going to play something here and I'm going to activate this. We need to wait a little bit. And there you go. So I'm going to just put this closer to the microphone so you can hear it. I will guide you step by step. Now, first thing I want to show you here is when you take the smartwatch, you will see here. So you can see now that the voice is transferred from the phone to the smartwatch. So you can leave your phone somewhere and then just listen whatever you like on the smartwatch. And beside all of this, we have also a small clock here and the battery level. While on the watch face, if you swipe up, it will take you to the messages menu where you can see your missed calls and messages. This is how it looks when someone calls you. You have an option to end the call. While on the watch face, if you swipe to the right, you will open another quick access menu where you have the last apps you used. So you can tap on one of them and open them from here. You also have the weather, calls and so on. So another really cool feature. While on the watch face, if you swipe to the left, you'll have here a few apps already set. So this is again, quick access for some of the apps. And you have this plus where you can remove these apps that we just saw and add one of these. So we can have just one app or all of them. You can choose which ones you want to put. So once you swipe to the left, you can access them quickly from here. Now, what now, when we are on the watch face, we can change our watch face by turning the button. When you turn the button, you're actually going to feel and 
hear small clicks, so it really feels right. And uh, yeah, there are a few watch faces here which you can change. These are the ones that are downloaded on the watch, but you can download more with the app. So if you don't like these ones, you can replace them with some other watch faces. While on the watch face, if you press the button, it will take you to the app list. So let's go through the list and see what we have here. On the first place, we have the telephone, so you can dial a number, tap on call, and then via Bluetooth, the smartwatch is going to transfer that to the phone and your phone is going to make a call. So that's the first step. Then, then we have the contact person, so you can create your list of contacts for speed dialing. After that, we have a call records. So again, people you called, you're going to see them here. Below that is the data app, so we already saw that. It just shows how many steps did you do today, how many calories you burned, kilometers, and so on. The next up on the list is the workout. Here you have different workout modes. So let's open one of them. Actually, I'm going to choose running. So once you choose the running mode, you have this counter, and this is how it looks. So you have on the top the watch, the counter, heart rate below it, steps, if you swipe to the left, here you have calories, kilometers, and again, steps. If you swipe to the right while on this screen, it will take you to this option to return back or end the workout. So I'm going to tap here and confirm, and that's it. That's how it works. So you can always swipe to the right to go one step backwards. The next step on the list is the workout records. Then we have the heart rate up. So this is a simple heart rate app which measures your heart rate. You'll have to put it, of course, on the hand and just uh, hold your hand still for a few seconds. Then we have the sleep app. This app shows you how long did you sleep overall, deep and light sleep. The next on the list is a blood pressure app. We'll talk about this later. Then we have, again, blood oxygen app, which measures your blood oxygen. Uh, we have the messages. We already saw that. Then we have the weather the weather app shows just the uh, current weather outside and the date. Below that we have the female app, music app. Here we can increase and decrease the volume. We can pause and play something on the phone and change the track. Right, so this controller controls the music on the phone. You cannot download the music on the watch. The next is the stopwatch. This is how it looks like. Below that, we have the timer. We have some predefined timers here, but you can also define your own here. This is how it looks like. And once the timer is done, the watch is going to vibrate. Then we have alarm clock. Here you can enable and disable your alarms, but you need to set them on the phone. Below that, again, is the find my phone feature. We already saw that. And then we have the settings. In the settings, we have the display watch faces so you can change your watch face then we have the brightness we saw that the next step is the screen time so here you will set how long do you want your watch face to stay visible when you press the button and below that is how long do you want your watch face to stay visible once you turn the wrist to see the watch face below the display is the battery here you just have the level of the battery and you can also turn on the power saving mode Below that is the vibration intensity. By default, is on soft. You can make it stronger. Then we have the language, so you can change the language here. Uh, QR code, password, you can set the password. So whenever you take the smartwatch off the hand, you will have to enter the password to use it again. And the last option is the settings. Here we have the standard things. So that's pretty much everything about software. Now let's talk a little bit about the app. The name of the app is Fit Cloud Pro, and this is how it looks like. So on the front page, we have some data here, sleep data, heart rate data, and so on. If you tap on device, here you have your push notifications, so you can set from which apps would you like to get notifications. This is the list of the apps from which you can get notifications. Then we have alarms here, activity reminders, so you can have uh, the reminders that will remind you to stand up every certain period of time. Below that, we have drink reminders. This is, again, a watch face library, local dial, weather reports, race to wake. This is the when you turn the wrist. Um, then we have automatic heart rate monitoring, disabled, find watch. This is not very useful. Uh, wrist preferences on which wrist you want to put 
update the watch. Then we have our style frequent contacts. So here you'll be able to add uh, your contacts to your list. And then from the smartwatch, you will have them on the speed dial. So you'll be able to quickly um, call them with the smartwatch. And uh, the last feature here that I want to talk about is the shake photography. The rest is not important. The shake photography allows you to make photos with the smartwatch. So whenever you open the app, you're going to see this icon here and you can just tap on the icon. You can see here the counter and it's going to take a photo. You can see the photo was taken. Again, I'm going to press it here. Three, two, one, and you'll see the message. So this is how the shake photography work. The reason why it's called shake photography is that you don't need to really tap here. You can just shake the smartwatch like this and see it's going to get activated. And with this, we are done with all the software features. Now the only thing left to do is to do some tests. So let's do that. The first test is race to wake feature. This test demonstrates the speed of your hand movement detection. From what I see, it looks like the standard response time. When it comes to the screen, you can see it has a really good viewing angles and the resolution is quite high. The brightness is really good. This is definitely one of the brightest budget smartwatches I ever reviewed. The touch responsiveness is really good. When it comes to the transitions, they are done really well. The next test I did was an alarm vibration test. I wanted to see if the vibration is strong enough to kick you out of the sleep. And what I found is that the vibration strength is somewhere in the middle. And I believe that it will wake you up if you're not too tired. One thing to take in consideration is that the vibration level is on soft by default. So you will have to change it to strong. When it comes to the step counter, I did three tests. The first one was for 100 steps and the watch recorded 103 steps. In the second test, I did 500 steps and the watch recorded 502 steps. While in the third test, I did 1000 steps while the watch recorded 1003 steps. When it comes to the battery test, from what I saw, it looks like you will get about one week of battery life on normal use. Charging time takes about two hours. The smartwatch comes with IP67 water resistance rating, which means that it has dust and sand resistance and that it was tested for water resistance by putting it at least for 30 minutes under the water in the depth up to 15 centimeters. What does this mean for you is that the watch will withstand taking a shower or a rainy day, but I would not go swimming with it. To test the heart rate up, I'll be using the pulse oximeter. I did seven different tests in the span of a few days, and here are my results. When it comes to the blood oxygen app, I did three tests, and here are my results. In the last test, I'm testing the blood pressure. In this test, I'll be using medically approved digital upper arm blood pressure monitor against the watch. The blood pressure monitor shows 1 to 2 over 80, while the watch shows 141 over 79. With this, I'm done with all of my tests. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and that you have found here what you were looking for. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. Thank you guys for watching and have a nice day. See you in the next one.